allow me to greet you on behalf of that name that is above every other name. Thank you for this opportunity of allowing me to share and encourage you through God's precious word. For a short while then, I want to turn your attention to the book of Job, the 23rd chapter and verse 3. The Bible tells us that Job, in his plight after losing everything, just a little background for those that might not know, Job was a very astute man. He was a very righteous man. The Bible tells us he was a very wealthy man. He had a beautiful family. And then one eventual day, yeah, he lost everything. He lost his entire fortune. He lost his family. And he lost most of his friends. In an instant. Uh, could happen to you today. God forbid he doesn't. But it could happen to you. Where you lose everything. Spare a thought for Job then. Uh, if... In, in, in his passion or in his, in his plight, uh, trying to find some sort of comfort. He cannot find it at home because uh, there's too much of a reminder of the kids or the family that he's lost. Uh, he's, he's only been survived by his wife uh, and both of them seem to be reading from two different books. Uh, she's reading from a book, how you should not or why you should not trust God. Uh, and he's reading the sequel and the bestseller, why you should trust God. Uh, and both of them cannot seem to agree on anything. Uh, and for him to po perhaps or possibly go out of the house and find comfort at his work, he has nothing because he's lost all his fortune. Spare a thought for this man then on the, in the third verse of the 23rd chapter when he says, Oh, that I know where I might find him. Job seems to say in verse 8 of the same chapter, When I go to the north, I cannot see his work. When I go to, to the south, he seems to be absent. When I go to the east, I cannot find his handiwork. When I go to the west, there is no traces of him. Oh, that I know where I might find him. This man in the state that he is, he knows or he cannot do anything except find some sort of relief or comfort. And he seems to try and find it all around him, but to no avail. I want to pause there for a while and take you then to the book of Exodus uh, when we, we see uh, the uh, patriarch uh, Moses uh, leading the children of Israel out of captivity from Egypt uh, into Israel. Uh, I want you to know after uh, the, the Pharaoh reluctantly agreeing to let the Egyptians go or, or the Israelites go, uh, Moses leads his people to, to their so-called so freedom. Uh, and I'm sure before all this and whilst he was there, there must have been a lot of planning uh, and penned a lot of details as to the escape route but we find that as he was escaping from the clutches of the of the Egyptian ruler they come face to face with the mighty Red Sea now I'm trying to engage and let's paint the picture and if you had to ask Moses tell me Moses now what did you do we know having read the Bible the outcome of the story but I wanted to take you back into the position where you were one of the Israelites and standing at the banks or standing on the shore of the Red Sea what would have been your thought right at that time when you look behind you, you could see the dust raising, you could hear the oaf beats, you could see the glistening of sword, and you know full well that it is the Egyptian army coming from you, for you. When you look in front of you, you see the waves crashing and this boisterous sea, and you know there is no way of escape in front of you. When you turn to the left and perhaps the dunes as it rises, you can see the, the, the sand rising and you know it's still the beach. When you look to the right, there is absolutely nothing you can see, there is no way of escape. I'm trying to picture myself being in the position of Moses and wondering Moses not tell us uh, what do you do um, the best advice Moses could uh, could have got or his advisors was uh, reduced to his brother Aaron and his sister Miriam uh, the rest of the people had no plan of what to do uh, and they are standing in front of the mighty Red Sea when we all get to heaven let's find Moses and let's find Job and tell us, what did you do? How did you get, get out of where you were? My friend, they will tell you, uh, in, a, in, in as much as they were looking to the left, to the right, in as much as they were looking behind them and forward them, there was an alternate direction, uh, and that is the upward direction. So Moses tell me, what did you do? Well, he says, when I looked all around me, I had no help. Uh, then I realized and recognized I served this mighty God. Uh, all I did was I looked up. When I looked up, uh, he came down and he made a way through the Red Sea. Uh, and if you ask Job, Job, so what did you do? Uh, well, like I said, uh, when I went to the north, I could not find him. When I went to the south, he was no way, no, no presence of him. Uh, uh, up on the east and the west, he was was particularly absent uh, and there was no way to find the traces of his work uh, so Job what did you do well my friend uh, I looked up uh, when I looked up uh, he came down 
today my friend whatever your situation might be perhaps you're standing in front of your Red Sea perhaps you've lost all your fortune and all your family you do not know what to do you are in a place where there is absolutely nothing you can do you've looked all around for some sort of reprieve you've you've looked all around you for some sort of help but there is nothing there is absolutely nothing on the horizon there is no light coming through the dark tunnel I want for you to pause and listen to me today uh, quit looking all around you uh, may I encourage you to the alternate direction and that is the upward direction the Bible tells me when you look up uh, he will come down the psalmist David so beautifully pens the words in Psalms I think it is 121 he says my help comes from the Lord above uh, today I'm encouraging you today uh, whatever you might be facing whatever you might be going through uh, our Lord God Behold, you've created the heavens and the earth, and your arm is not too short that you will never reach out for us. May I encourage you this morning. You have nothing to lose. Look up. When you look up, he will come down and meet you at the point of your need. Perhaps today you don't know who Jesus is. I'd like to take this opportunity in, in a few moments uh, just to tell you that Jesus loves you. Jesus cares about you. And Jesus wants to give you uh, an eternal home. And there's only one way of finding this eternal home or getting this eternal home. Uh, and that is to believe in Jesus, to accept him as your Lord and Savior. And maybe you stumbled upon this broadcast uh, and listening to it right now, from wherever you might be sitting or whatever you might be doing or whatever your position or circumstances might be. Uh, allow me to tell you that Jesus loves you. And if you don't know who Jesus is, perhaps this is an opportunity just to accept him. It's a simple prayer. Father, forgive me. I am a sinner. Forgive my indiscretions and today I ask you to wash me white as snow. I believe you died on the cross and I believe you're coming back for me. So won't you forgive me and make me own? That's all you need to say, my, uh, my friend. Allow me to pray then for you. Father, today we come to you through your son Jesus. We come at those that are standing in front of the Red Sea. Father, we, we come at those that are standing and looking around and, and seem to find no solution to the problems. Father, today help them to recognize and allow this encouragement to motivate them to look up uh, from whence come the help. And Father, today those that don't know who you are, Lord, uh, we are asking that you will touch them and they will give you an opportunity and they will invite you into the hearts. So I pray that you will bless them both, Lord, take care of them and watch over them wherever they're listening from. In Jesus' name. Amen. We'd like to extend our gratitude and thanks for you to you for listening to this from wherever you are. Uh, we trust that this message would bring comfort to your souls, joy to you, and healing to your body. So wherever you're listening from, we thank you, for, and, and God bless you. And you'll find him there, eyes open wide.